Hello everyone, welcome to Tomorrow. While I was at the ISDC conference this year, I met and talked with James Burke from the Mars Society about a really cool virtual reality project he's working on called Mars VR. So check out this interview where we talk about how virtual reality could help future missions to Mars. All right, well, James, thank you very much for sitting down with us today. First off, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you got interested in the space industry and how you first got involved with the Mars Society. Well, it's a long story. I'll try to have it be brief. Um, I was six years old and I went to the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. with my mother. And uh, she bought me the Omni Space Almanac. And uh, it's an amazing book. I still have it. And it had all these charts about how soon we're going to go to the moon, the moon and Mars. And I was always disappointed because in the book it said we were going to be in Mars in the 80s and you know Saturn in the 90s and all that stuff. So um, I, growing up, I was like, hey, what's going on? So I, when I became an adult, I just wanted to help out, push that stuff forward. Um, the Mars Society, I've been a founding member of them so since 1998. I've been involved with them. I was the Seattle chapter president, and then I've been the IT director since 2011. Oh, wow. Um, so how is it that you, right now, you're working on a virtual reality project, and I, I'm assuming it's because you're uh, now with IT. Uh, how did that project come about, and what is it that you guys are trying to show and accomplish with that? So we really want to make virtual reality uh, a core part of what we do, and we have a project called the Mars Desert Research Station now that we've been doing for about 17 years, and we send crews out there. Uh, every two weeks there's a new crew. And we train those folks, so it gets kind of old having to train the same, tell people the same thing over and over again. Um, so we thought, why don't we do this in virtual reality? We can create a virtual reality environment of the MDRS, and we can uh, send that to people before they come out. They can do the training at home. They, they don't really even need a headset. They can use their computer to do it too. And that will just let them hit the ground running when they get to the MDRS. Um, we see virtual reality as a critical tool with the human exploration of Mars. If you imagine when the first astronauts land on Mars, they'll take with them rovers and drones and they'll really survey the landing site that they're at. And we, they can send all that information back to Earth and folks can assemble that into a VR environment and allow everyone else on Earth to explore along with them. And if we were able to do that, you'd be able to comb that landing site and have thousands, maybe even millions of people look at all the terrain and the rocks and look for things that the astronauts should go check out for real. And so we can kind of co-explore the site along with them. We call this concept crowd exploring, and we really want to be the pioneers of crowd exploring. Um, with this, are you guys using um, traditional hardware, or are you guys coming up with your own gear in order to pull this off? So for our phase one Kickstarter, which ends in five days, we're very close. We only need to raise about $4,000 as of right now. Um, we're going to create a virtual reality environment that works on the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, but also on any computer. We're going to use the Unity platform. And as long as you have a decent graphics card, you'll be able to make use of what we're going to do. We're going to use this technique called photogrammetry to really scan the entire area around the MDRS and the facilities inside and out and create a, a, a realistic virtual reality environment that people can go into and explore. And um, they, they can go on EVAs around the square mile around the MDRS as well. And so that phase one, uh, we're going to use existing hardware that's out there now. This high-end hardware and also computers uh, can, can run that. Now, long term, what we really want to do is have this in museums. And I, was, I had the opportunity to go to JPL uh, last September and see what they're doing with HoloLenses that Microsoft uh, created. Um, now, those are more of a high-end hardware. Um, but they were able to do some amazing things with the Curiosity rover data, and they do kind of a similar thing where they look around at where the Curiosity rover is every day and decide where they want to drill. Um, I had the opportunity to see what they're doing there, and when I got back to Seattle, I contacted the, our local museum of flight and said, how can I help you guys put something like this in the museum? They're very interested in this. Uh, they actually have about 12 HTC Vive headsets just laying around, not doing anything. So they're really excited to talk to me about potentially creating an application that could be used as a museum exhibit there. 
And so we really want to do stuff like that long term. We also want to be able to build applications that run on any smartphone and on some of the lower end devices that are out there now. There's one called the Oculus Go that just came out this month, a $200 uh, headset, doesn't require a computer. Um, but it's a little bit lower powered than what a traditional VR headset has uh, with its capabilities. So for phase one, we're probably not going to be able to build an application for the Oculus Go, but long term we really want to. We want to be able to use this as a public outreach tool so that people can really experience Mars and virtual reality in a really easy way. We want there to be a low barrier to entry to that. And then even longer term, do you guys have any plans of utilizing VR to actually have a controllable teleoperated system or some sort of rover or other robotic that would be controlled with VR? Yeah, absolutely. Because once you have a VR environment, you can connect that to real world uh, applications and real world hardware. So you can imagine uh, if you're on Mars, if you're in a base on Mars using virtual reality to control some of the rovers outside the base. Um, and see what they see in virtual reality. That, that's possible as well. Um, some people ask me, what's the latency gonna be if I'm exploring Mars back on Earth? It's a nine minute delay, like how would that work? Well, you probably wouldn't be doing it real time. You would have data that had been sent back to you, maybe from that day or the previous day, and you'd be exploring that. And so if it would be real time for you inside the virtual reality environment because you're running it locally. Um, but you could also imagine a scenario, like I mentioned, where there's, there's folks, astronauts in the base on Mars, talking to astronauts outside on EVA through virtual reality and co-exploring the same location along with them. So there's a lot of things you can do with VR. Wow. Um, so uh, what other sort of plans do you guys have um, uh, other than the training mm -hmm. and uh, putting this in museums? Is there any sort of other um, uh, methods or plans that you guys have to, especially for outreach? Yes. Um, when we get past phase one and build the MDRS training environment, what we're going to work on next is building a Mars a full Mars globe environment. So basically, you can imagine putting your headset on, the full globe of Mars is in front of you, all the named features are tagged, and all the landing sites are tagged on the globe, and you can point at something and you zoom all the way down to the surface and you can walk around in VR on that surface location. Now, from a technical perspective, that is possible. It's gonna take some work, but there have been proof of concepts done with the real uh, MOLA altimeter data from the Mars Global Surveyor that has 100% coverage around the planet. And then overlaying that with um, orbiter, orbital data, orbiter, orbital imagery, the Mars orbital camera, the high-rise camera, the CRISM camera, um, all, those, all that data is available. There's not 100% coverage of the higher resolution ones but we can have at least some type of experience wherever they land there. Um, so if we are able to build an application like that, we would use that to do a lot of public outreach in museums and schools, and it would also be a great research tool because you'd be able to go into the virtual reality environment of Mars where you want to explore and, and really see what the terrain is like. Um, based off of the MOLA data and the imagery that we already have. It's a, it's a different way to visualize all this than just looking at it on a flat 2D image. Now, are there any sort of uh, um, obstacles that would prevent you guys from uh, getting data from other organizations like ESA or the Indian Space Research Organization of their Mars data as well? I don't foresee any. We've been in some contact with those folks and they're, especially ESA, they're very excited about this project. Um, obviously, the NASA data is public domain, so we won't have any issue using that. But um, yeah, we will need to get some uh, agreements in place with the other space agencies to to get the data we need. Um, we don't see any problem doing that because you know we're a nonprofit organization where this is an, a public outreach and educational tool, um, and so we really hope that they'll be able to partner up with us and give us what we need. Awesome. Well, uh, there's a couple of general questions that I would like to ask you that we'd okay. like to ask of all of our guests. Okay. Um, and the first one is, what is your favorite space mission, either past, present, or future? Uh, the Mars Pathfinder was my favorite mission, the first rover on Mars. It happened while I was in college. It had a huge impact on me and on my life. Um, right after that, the Mars Society was founded. 
and I've been working with them ever since. And so, yeah, that's definitely my, still my number one favorite mission. Wow. Where do you think, uh, I mean, uh, well, I'm going to skip this one because I feel like the answer is obvious. Normally I ask you, where do you think that we as a species should go next? But uh, Well, you know, Dr. Zubrin this morning gave a really interesting talk called Moon Direct and how to really establish a sustainable lunar architecture for the moon. And if we do that in the next few years, because there is public support and political support for that right now, if we do that, that's gonna be a great stepping stone for going to Mars. Like ultimately, we need to get to Mars, we need to establish a new branch of human civilization on Mars. That's the big destination for us, but it's a hard destination. And if we can really practice the craft on the moon and be able to pilot out some of the things we're gonna do on Mars, on the moon, which is only three days away, then that would be a great next step, I think. Absolutely. And then finally, uh, why space? Why are you doing this? Space is an amazing area of effort, I think. Um, it's so, there's so many things you can do that are uh, interesting to the public, that are interesting from a technical perspective and an and a engineering perspective. You know, I'm an engineer. I've, I've been a software engineer my whole career. I was with Microsoft uh, for a while and, um, you know, Building things for space, especially the virtual reality stuff, is just super exciting to me because uh, we're going to be able to give people the ability to go to the moon, to Mars without actually going there. And so, you know, just putting on a VR headset, they can be on Mars and explore the real terrain there. That's just super exciting to me to be able to, to come up come up with that possibility. So. Well, where can people find more information about you, this VR project, and the Mars Society in general? So we have a domain, marsvr.io. Um, also, our main website, marssociety.org, has a lot of information about this project. We're doing the Kickstarter right now. We have about five days left. Uh, one of the rewards for the Kickstarter is this metal medallion that has the Mars Society logo on the front and Mars VR on the back. Um, and this is one of the things you can get on the Kickstarter but uh, you can find all that information out on marsvr.io. Awesome. Is there anything else that you would like to add or, or, uh, or share with us today? No, it just this has been an amazing conference. You know, we saw the stuff with the Expanse happen last night. They got uh, saved, and Jeff Bezos' talk was amazing. I think he's a quite a visionary. Um, he committed to pouring money into space technology development, and that's just an amazing uh, thing that that I, I feel like there's a lot of things going on in space right now. The interest in Mars has never been higher than it is now. And I've seen over the last 20 years the, the, the changes and the difference. So this is a very exciting time and it's just great to be here at ISDC and, and see everything that's going on here as well. Awesome. Well, James, thank you again very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. I did want to give a quick update to this. At the time of filming this interview, they only had a few days left of their Kickstarter campaign, but I wanted to report that they were successfully able to fund their Kickstarter campaign and have gotten the money they needed to move forward with this project. So I'm really excited to see where this could lead in the future, whether it be a tool just for the Mars Society or whether this could be used for other projects and whether or not others will independently come up with their own VR systems or whether this one will be used. So time will tell to see what, uh, uh, what comes of this, but I'm very excited and hopefully we'll be able to have James Burke on again to talk about updates once uh, they've had uh, some more progress with it. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that and be sure to check out marsvr.io for more information. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and be sure to tune into our live show every Saturday at 1800 Coordinated Universal Time.